parent, for strength coaches, uh, just regular team coaches and parents to understand the science behind everything that we do in the gym. And everything you just described is a quality performance training and injury reduction program. And as you were talking about the importance of trunk stability, I was like, well, that's why we shouldn't be doing sit-ups. But I see so many soccer teams doing these sit-up circuits or even with plyometrics. There's there's no point to that. If if, if anything, they're increasing their risk of low back pain. Absolutely. that's, That's not a good idea. Yeah, it's it's not a good exercise for the core, and it's definitely not a good exercise for the low back. Thank you for saying that because I I walk by a lot of soccer practices nowadays because I'm at the field a lot, and I see growing female athletes going through these weird circuits with sit ups and and burpees and high volume plyometrics that are the furthest from everything you just talked about as far as landing mechanics. So I hope everyone listening takes this seriously. And this is why it is important to have a good performance coach and a quality program for your female soccer players and to also read the research and follow people like Tim who have committed their life to studying this. <laughs> and even myself, I'm still learning. I have a whole page of notes here and I'm just so grateful, Tim, you came on the show today. And I want everyone to just be aware of what you have on the horizon and any new research we should be looking out for. So what I'm doing now, the reason I'm at Marshall University is I'm working with a, a team of surgeons here, the head surgeon is named Chad Lavender, and he developed what we call the fertilized ACL. And basically what it is, it has five components to it that are relatively novel. It uses a quadriceps tendon graft, which has a lot of collagen in it, can be larger than normal. it's, It's also utilizing that quadriceps, which can be dominant, so it addresses that quadriceps dominance issue. It also, it's an all inside technique. So he's not drilling outside the bone all the way through the tibia and femur, just on the insides of the bone. It also utilizes an internal brace, which is a a metalized suture that actually assists and guards the ACL like a seatbelt. And then he also incorporates a demineralized bone mag- matrix to help the, the graft um, assimilate into the bone better. And then he uses biologics, usually BMAC, which is, is bone marrow derived uh, aspirate concentrate. And so it has growth factors and, and stem cells that promote healing of the, of the graft. And what we're trying to figure out is, will this, along with these other techniques that I just talked about, reduce the risk of a young athlete having a second ACL injury? And that's my passion now, because if you tear your ACL, your risk of tearing another ACL, either the one with the reconstructed graft or the contralateral side, very often in young female athletes, they overlook the contralateral side, they'll tear the opposite leg more often. Your risk of doing that, having a second ACL tear, is somewhere between 20 and 40 percent, let's say between a quarter and a third. That's just way too high. And that's where we're going now is trying to figure out why that happens using the same techniques of randomized controlled trials and prospective cohort studies to then reduce the risk of second and third. And we've had athletes with six ACL tears and reconstructions. I mean, we've got to to reduce the risk of that happening because it's unacceptably high in these young athletes. Mm 